Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. We here at the Church of God, 4601 South Drexel Boulevard in Chicago, Illinois. We welcome, we say welcome to the saints that fellowship with us, friends, family, saints for other congregations that have joined us today. And we want to welcome you to the start of a new quarter. We just finished an exciting study in 1 Timothy, and now God has for us to continue studying the life of Paul and Timothy and some others as well in this second quarter. And as we get started today, we want to do what the scripture encourages us to do, to acknowledge him in all our ways. And it says he will direct our path. So we're asking for God to bless us today, today because we didn't get a chance to go over the first lesson last week. What we're doing is we're splitting the class. Sister Carenza is going to present on lesson one, and then I will come back to do lesson two. So at this time, let us acknowledge the, the Lord so that God would bless Sister Carenza and myself for his own glory. Let's pray, saints. Dear Heavenly Father, God, in Jesus' name, thank you for how you have blessed us time and time and time again, Father God. And now on this great occasion, O oh God, where we come to share the word of life with your people, O oh God, with the souls of mankind, O oh God, neither one of us can do it of ourselves, O oh God. That's not even our desire. We ask that you would be with your people on today, Lord God. Bless this class. Open up the bread of life that it would meet needs for the glory of God. Take us out of ourselves, O oh God. Have your divine way. In Jesus Christ's most precious name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So this quarter, what we're doing is we're starting off with a new letter from Paul to Timothy. And this new letter, it kind of is, I think the historians say it's about four years after 1 Timothy was written. Okay? And in those four years, the culture the atmosphere has gotten extremely worse for the saints of God, for the Christians, that are especially those that are dealing with uh, living in Rome. And if anybody has studied any church history, you probably acquainted with Emperor Nero. Where during this time, Emperor Nero, he was in Rome and they had a huge fire that occurred in Rome. And in Rome, maybe, all, they had like 24 different quadrants of the city and most of them were severely burned and destroyed during this great fire. And of those quadrants, only a few of them survived, maybe four out of the 24. I can't remember the exact number, but those four that survived, you know what? Two of them were full of Christians. They were full of Christians. And so, Emperor Nero wanted a scapegoat. He wanted somebody to blame for the destruction because this fire was so great and large that it lasted six days and seven nights. The fire burned and ravaged the city. Well, Nero didn't want to look bad. He didn't want to look like he didn't have control over everything. So he found a scapegoat and they began to blame the Christians. Yep. And so this time when Paul got arrested, remember he had been arrested already and he was on house arrest. But this time when he got arrested, it was a different atmosphere. They put him in a jail that, the name of the jail was House of Darkness. Mm. And in that House of Darkness, Paul had a realization. He wow. knew, I'm not getting out this time. Wow. And because of that, he sent his last letter to the churches to his mentee, Timothy. Isn't that something? Yeah. Can you imagine Paul sitting there in that dungeon, the house of darkness? And in his mind, it's almost like he writes his last will and testament, what he wow. wants to leave because he sees something is coming and he's crying out to prepare the people. And he wants to prepare Timothy, who at this time is at Ephesus. And he says here, I have fought a good fight. Can we say that today? We should be able to say to this point, I have fought a good fight. He 
said, I have finished my course. It might end here, but while I'm here, I'm still being profitable. And he says here, I have kept the faith. So with that in mind, we're going to move to lesson one with Sister Carenza. God bless you, saints. Amen. Thank God for you, Sister Crystal. Thank you for teeing that up. That gives us a good context with which we can talk about lesson one. I'm sorry, I got my mask on. Oh. <laughs> good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning, Periscope. Amen. Thank God for yet being saved and yet being in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. All right, so that was a real good intro. Thank God for the prayer. So let's get started with stirring up the gift of God. And I know that Sister Crystal will come back to where she has left off. And hopefully where I end this lesson will make a good segue for the intro to her lesson. So lesson one, stirring up the gift of God. Are we stirring up the gifts this morning, saints? Are we excited about the things of God? We should be. Amen? Amen. All right. So here are the points to consider. I just want to go through these really, really briefly um, as the Lord will permit. But the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. And we have your scriptural references here, so you can read those on your own. But the context to these points to consider is what I want to touch on just briefly. So this first one, you know, when God gives us a gift, when I say the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable, God is not going to take back what he has done. He's not going to change his mind about giving us the gifts that he gives us. He's not going to take it back, that ability that he's given to us. Right. It's his expectation, though, that what we do is we exercise those gifts. We cultivate those gifts. We develop them. And God himself will refine our gifts if we just stir them up the way that he wants us to do. And the end result is that God will get the glory. Point number two, God always equips and empowers those who he calls. And our scriptural reference is from 1 Peter 4 and 10. And my thought here is that not only does God give the gifts, right? It's God that's giving the gifts, right? right. But God is also the one who gives the ability through the power of the Holy Ghost. And most important, again, going back to point one, God is the one who gets the glory, not us. Right. Point number three, your gifts will make room for you. You believe that? Amen. Your gifts will land you in your place in the body. Isn't that a blessing to know? All you have to do is keep walking in the light, keep communing with God, keep walking straight ahead. And God has a way. He will lead you and guide you into your truth of where you need to be in the body of Christ. It's amazing that when we exercise our gifts, God is the one who opens the door. And the doors that he opens, no man can shut. And you know what? He'll lead us into high places, both naturally and spiritually, through the gifts that he gives. Amen? Amen. There's no limit to what God can do through a sold out vessel. Point number three, when we're fully persuaded that God will keep us through our tests and trials, we can be unashamed and unafraid to suffer. Right. Just like Paul. He said, I'm persuaded. And you know what, for me in my own life, I can say I'm persuaded too, because time and time again, God has kept me from falling. God has kept that which I committed unto him against that day. Point number three, even when we live for God and faithfully occupy our place in the body, just like Paul, you know what? We're going to suffer. We must be encouraged though, because it is for our making. Philippians 3 and 10 says that I might know him. Paul wrote this in the power of his resurrection, but he didn't stop 
there, he said, Lord, I want to know you in the fellowship That's of right. your suffering. Why? So I can be more and more like my Jesus. And that is the place where all of us have to get to because we're not going to heaven without the grace to suffer through what we're faced. And point number four, final point, Paul was willing to suffer without shame for the gospel and the testimony of Christ. We've talked about that. We'll talk about it throughout this lesson today. And we've said it already. We have to, saints. I can't drill it enough. We must be willing to suffer. Yes. Paul understood what, you know what? That there is power in our suffering. Can you imagine that? Think about the times when you've had to go through your tests and your trials. Guess what? Somebody was looking at your life. Somebody was watching how you're going through what you're going through. Right. I heard it time and time again where saints have given testimonies. And they say, oh, because of the way that brother suffered or the way that sister suffered and went through that, it pricked my heart and I wanted to be saved. There is power in our suffering, not only for the person looking on, but for we ourselves. Those are the points to consider just as we walk through this lesson today. And we'll move on here to the memory verse review. And there is our, our icon for Periscope. But this time you won't have to um, weigh in into an answer, but the thought here is an introspective question. Something that maybe you can ponder or think about on your own, and then hopefully it can connect to a deeper thought that we desire to bring out today. The memory verse here is for God. Read it for us, please, Elder. We have a guest reader. <laughs> he's not a guest. He's a resident reader like us. Okay. Elder, <laughs> Elder Sandra, if you would be so kind. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Yes. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and yes. of love and of a sound mind. Amen. This scripture is near and dear to my heart because so oftentimes I felt I struggled with fear. And God so many times encouraged my heart with this scripture, letting me know that I haven't given you that spirit. I've given you power. I've given you love. I've given you a sound mind. And whatever I call you to, my grace will bring you through. So come on, get to work. Stir up those gifts. Don't be afraid of the face of man. Go forth in the things of God. Amen. And I want to encourage somebody else who might be having that same struggle. God is able to keep that which we commit to him. Amen. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think of him. God is the one that has to do it. But when we get out of ourselves and let God do it, That's it. then it will be done. Yes. So my question here is, do you think that Paul thought that Timothy was timid or fearful or shy? Is that Paul's reason for writing and exhorting Timothy along this line here of our memory verse? Like I said, you don't have to respond. It's just that something to think about, something to chew on, something that I meditated on. And what I came to was, I don't believe that Paul thought Timothy was fearful. I don't believe that he thought Timothy was so timid or inequipped or ill-equipped to do the work that was set out for him to do. And I say that because of this word, us. Paul says God has not given, he didn't say you, Timothy. He said us. So while Paul was exhorting and admonishing Timothy, he was ministering not only to Timothy and to us, but he was ministering to himself. Right. Sister Crystal already brought it out where he was in that deep, dark place, that dungeon. And God had revealed it to him. <laughs> You're not coming out of this one. You're not coming out of this one, Paul. But he, in this scripture, was exhorting himself. God has not given us, us, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And as he ministered to Timothy, look at the benefits that 
that we are enjoying today. We can use this for our own personal testimonies. And then I say this, what if Timothy was timid? Because scholars and writers, they have written, oh, we feel that Timothy was this or whatever. So what? Paul revealed God's method, methodology for choosing a vessel to use, Amen. choosing someone who he will pour out his gifts yeah. upon yeah. and use through the power of his Holy Ghost. What does this scripture say, Elder Sandridge? 1 Corinthians 1, 29. Yes, sir. 26 and 29. Yes, sir. For you see your calling, brethren. You see. How that not many wise men after the flesh. It's not the wise men. Not many mighty. It's not the strong men. Not many noble are called. It's not the smartest or the wisest. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. He's chosen the foolish. To confound the wise. To confound those who think they know so much. And God has chosen the weak things. God chooses the weak things. Glory to God. Amen. To confound the things which are mighty. Those things that are despised of men. Right. God Amen. chooses those Amen. things. Amen. He chooses the least. It doesn't matter if you're big, you're tall, fat, right. smart, skinny, hair, bald. It doesn't matter. Yes, man. God chooses the weak. Yes. And there's a reason why God uses this method. In his choosing whom he will use. And that is in verse 29. What does it say? Verse 29. No, that no flesh should glory no in his flesh. presence. No. Nobody can get the glory. God will not get his glory to another. Neither his praises to graven images. God's whole point and purpose in calling us and saving us and choosing us. Is so that he can be glorified. Amen. It is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's right. I thank God for the qualifications for God's use. And I was meditating on this. And in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 20 and 21, God uses a sanctified vessel, that's a qualifier. We need to be sanctified. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Acts, tarry ye in Jerusalem Amen. until you be endued that's with right. power. Amen. So we have to be sanctified. And you know if we're sanctified, we got to be justified. That, that goes without saying. Amen. I'm just cutting to the chase here. Right. This is the qualifiers of what God chooses. And when he uses a vessel, so when you meet the conditions that are here, God will use you for his glory. He chooses a willing vessel. Mm -hmm. He chooses a perfect heart, a heart that's perfect towards him. He chooses a living sacrifice, a willing and a living sacrifice. So let's, let's touch on this for one moment, please. Elder, would you? Second Timothy 2, 20 and 21. Yes, it talks about a great house. But in a great house. In a great house. What's the great house? What's the greatest house you know? It's the house of prayer. It's the house of God. It's the church of the living God. It's the pillars and the ground of the truth. In a great house, what? You got all kinds of vessels. There are not only vessels, vessels of gold you and got silver. You got some. Who are the vessels? It's us. It's us. You got vessels that are gold, vessels that are silver. But also of wood. But wood. And of earth. And of earth. And some to honor. Some are honorable. And some to and dishonor. Some to dishonor. Yeah. What type of vessel are you? Come on. Mm -hmm. And what type of vessel are you striving to be? Me, from my house, and me, <laughs> this temple, I choose. I want to be gold, Lord. I'm going for the gold. But you know the gold has a price tag attached to it. The Bible says, buy of me. That is that it, it implies that, hey, I'm going to have to make an exchange here. I'm going to have to make a sacrifice. Buy of me 
go tried in the fire. And you know what? That's what each and every one of us should do. What if we did that? My God, the power, the miracles, the things that God would do. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not even heard. The things that God would do for his people. I want to touch on that gold and silver. Did you finish? No. I'm sorry. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Yes, if he purge himself from carnality. Come he on. shall be a vessel unto honor. He'll be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. Sanctified. And meet for the master. And use. meet, ready, qualified, capable, meet for the master's use. And prepared unto every good work. And prepared unto every good work. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says the, the silver is mine mm -hmm. and the gold is Amen. mine. Amen. And you know what I get from that, Lord? You're the one that created these precious metals. They're not man-made. They can't be synthetic. Right. But they have to be made by God. Amen. And when we go through our suffering, you know what God is doing? He's making us. Make He's Amen. making us vessels of gold. Vessels He's making us yes. vessels of honor. But we have to be tried in the fire. Woo. Paul talks Woo. about how in the house, you know, Christ being the foundation, when you lay on that foundation, yes. you're going to yes. go work for the feet of gold. Yes. They're going to be silver. Yes. They're going to be wood, hay, and stubble. And guess what? You're not going to get by God because the fire is going to be right. yeah. It's not going to be my mouth. It's going to be the fire yeah. that's going to reveal of what sort my works are. Yeah. What do you want to be? A vessel of gold? Yes, do you want to be honorable? Yes, Young people, where are you today? Oh. I'm calling on you. Uh, just like Paul called Timothy, he mentored him. You know, that's our job. We've got to talk to you in the sense because you're the next ones coming up on. the heads of the church oh, you want to be a part of the struggle are you going to be real are you going to be sanctified oh, are you going to be prepared for yeah. the good work that yeah. is ahead you know I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be prepared Amen. that vessel of honor but will you sell out yeah. will you not be distracted God is looking for gold and silver those are precious metals. I thank God. They're beautiful. They're rare, you know. And God uses through the scripture the benchmark of gold. And even in life, you know, when we talk about finances or talk about anything at all, you know, we say this terminology, oh, that's the gold standard. Mm -hmm. That means there's nothing higher. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to be for God's own purpose and glory. We want to be the gold standard. We want people in our generation to look on us and say something different about that young woman. There's something different about that young man. Amen. And that difference Amen. is God, thank God. That's what Timothy did. Paul had confidence in Timothy. He didn't think he was scared. He didn't think he was timid. He heard his testimony. And it was a strong faith that he remembered in Timothy. It was unfeigned. It wasn't embellished. It wasn't exaggerated. He was real. He was sincere. He truly loved God. And anybody who is in that condition fits and meets the place where God wants you to be. He'll give you the gifts. We can desire them. The best gifts. And God can use us. Not so I can compete with you, Sister Crystal. Not so I can compete with you, Sister Deborah. But so that God can use me in my place according to my ability okay. to do what he wants okay. me to do. So that I can say, like Paul, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Because each one of us has something that we need to finish in yeah. this life. Yeah. Okay. Here it says in... First Chronicles 29 and 5. 29 and 5. The gold for the things of gold and the yes. silver for the things of yes. silver. Yes, and talking about gold and silver again. Yes, sir. And for all manner of work. All the work. To be made by the Come hands on. of artifice. God is looking for willing vessels. And who then is willing who to is willing? Yeah. 
this service. This day I have to break his service this day. You don't have to wait till we get back meeting every week. Glory. This is the right Glory. time and place right in this pandemic. Who then is willing this day to sacrifice or consecrate his service to the Lord? David was talking about, talking to the congregation in this, about his son Solomon. He said it. He said, Solomon, my son, he's young. He's tender. He may not have a lot of experience in the work of building that temple. Because you know the Bible puts in types and shadows and things like that. But the work that we have before us, saints, the work is great. But I love, I love what David was saying he did. He prepared with all his might. He talks about it. He said his affections were uh, set on the house of God. Are your affections set on things Come above on. today? He gave over and above. He spent himself yes. for the cause of Christ. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Well, he goes on and he says, but the vessels were still needed. The willing vessels, not just any vessels, but willing vessels vessels. Yeah. And 2 Corinthians 16 and 9, a Second perfect Chronicles. heart. Can you read that? 2 Chronicles? Yes, 2 Chronicles, I'm sorry, 16, 16 and, nine. and 9. What does that say? For the eyes of the Lord Come run on. to and fro yes. throughout the whole earth throughout the whole to show earth. himself strong. God is looking, searching the whole planet show himself to show strong, himself strong in and the behalf of those whose heart, whose heart is perfect, is perfect Glory. towards him. Well, we're himself. still talking about stirring Amen. up the Amen. gifts this morning. Amen. We're still talking about stirring up the gifts. And now i got to hasten on. 2 Timothy 1 and 6 says what else? Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance yes. that thou should stir up the gift of God, yes. which is in thee, yes. by the putting on of my hand. Yes. Hmm. Amen. You have a gift. You want God to stir it up. Come on. Come and let the ministry lay hands on That's you right. as the pastor uh, see come fit. On. Yes, Talk man. to the pastor. Yes, man. Come and let us lay hands on you. Yes, You know, Timothy's gift made room for him. These were some of the gifts that I talked about um, earlier, his gift of faith. You know, um, I feel like Timothy had a wholehearted faith. He was just faithful. And if you read that second epistle of Timothy, that theme of faithfulness transcends through the whole chapter, the whole book of that Bible. And it's because... God found Timothy faithful. And we as good stewards, you know what? It's required of us. We have to be found faithful. I thank God for Timothy. No hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. It was real faith. Amen. Right. It wasn't pretense. Right. It was real because the fruit bore it out. His preaching and his teaching, his leadership. Remember when Paul um, had to go to Macedonia? Paul left Timothy at the church of Ephesus, and that church was a little bit in trouble. So Paul used Timothy to help him work through church conflicts. That was one of his gifts. And that church, remember, had left their first love. Remember, they were dealing with fables and genealogies and false teachers and the apostasy that was impending. But because of Paul's confidence in Timothy. He left him in charge. Amen. Our gifts Amen. will make room for us and bring us before our great men, the All Bible right. says. I, I copied this from the book and I thought this was good. Yes. And um, so I'm going to have to hasten on. But here's this is something I wanted to get charisma. That word gift means charisma. Um, and you know what? We, can, we can't we can boast of our gifts in ourselves. Can you read this for me, Elder? Yes, 
uh, Romans 12, 3 what through 6. Say? For I say, through the grace given unto me, yes. to every man that is among you, yes. not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, right. but to think soberly, yes. according as God has dealt to every man the measure, measure of faith. faith. For as we have many members in one body, yes. and all the members have not the same office, right. so we, being many, are one body in Christ, yes. and every one members of one of another. Yes. Having then gifts, yes. differing according to the grace that is given to us. It's according to the grace that God gives us that he gives us our several gifts. We're not going to go through this today, but on your own, take time, meditate on this parable of the talents. Mm -hmm. You know the story. Mm -hmm. You know there were three servants, and they were all given um, the, the Lord's wares. And when he came back to get the reports, two of them had more to show than what they started with. But that one that was afraid, that one that hid his talent in the earth, that one wicked, slowful servant, he was cast out into outer darkness. We have a responsibility to cultivate the gifts of God, to develop those gifts so that God can get the glory. I can't say it uh, enough. You know, in closing here, you know, Paul was warning Timothy in this second epistle, this last letter, that he was writing from a very dark place in his life. Thank God he wasn't uh, in darkness uh, in and of itself. He was encouraged. Amen. He said, I'm not ashamed. Oh, I'm not fearful. Oh, I know in whom I have believed. Amen. And Paul was fully persuaded. So if you get the slides, you can read this later. But um, I was encouraged to read of Paul's courage and his determination, his determination to finish that work that God had given him to do. Thank God for his testimony. Thank God for this lesson one. We just wanted to touch on it for you. Um, finally, I'll just say this, that Paul had ended, uh, well, lesson one, I feel ended on this. Paul saw the need to pass that baton. Succession planning, as we do, as the pastor sees it. So be ready. Mm. Amen. You never know. Amen. What God is going to do with your life. The scripture says here where Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so if you want to look at this later, do so please. But the greatest gift of all that God has given to us is the gift of eternal life. Amen. So let's work on stirring that up the most. Giving your testimony and living a holy life. Amen. We thank God for lesson one. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. God. Amen. Thank God we didn't uh, not make room for that blessing, Amen. that word that right. encouraged us and challenged us. In these days, this day and age that we're living in, we need the challenge. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We need the, because the devil is relentless. But I thank God that God's grace is sufficient. Sure. And now that we've stirred up the gift, we've applied our hearts to learn and be inspired by the Spirit of God. Now we want to know what else is necessary. Remember how I mentioned earlier that Paul knew he sensed Maybe God bore witness with his heart, saying, what you call them? You can't hear the mic. Maybe God bore witness and let him know you're not going to make it out of here. But his burden said, you know what? Send a letter. I need you to talk to Timothy and encourage him. And so he said, stir up the gift. And then he told him something else. He said, keep the faith. Yes. And this is lesson two. So... We're stirring up the gift, but we got to remember, we got to keep the faith as well. Because what's the use of the gift if you don't have the faith that activates and anoints the gift for the glory of God? 
And so we've already talked a little bit about some of the things Sister Carenza covered how Paul was in jail. Let me get my little pointer. She covered how Paul was in jail and here he was. Can you imagine? Before he was on house arrest. Right. But now he was in prison. Wow. He wasn't in a house. He was in prison. He was chained in prison. And sometimes, you know, when your life turns a different way, people look like maybe you must be doing something wrong. Right. Maybe the, the devil talked to your mind and make you think, well, how did it go from bad to worse? It was bad being, you know, in house arrest, but now I'm in prison. Yes. Guess what? God has a plan. His ways are far exceed our Amen. ways. Yep. So here he was. He was there and he was inspired to encourage somebody else. What do you do in your hard place? Do you reach out by faith to encourage somebody else, even if it's only a letter, a text, a call, or anything? In your hard places, in your dark times, what do you do? Come on. Amen. And he wrote a letter to Timothy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the faith goes on. Even when we leave here, the faith continues Absolutely. as long as there is time. Yes. Right. And here we see how the faith was built on the life of Lois and Eunice, his grandmother. Yes. We got to stay saved because guess what? Those coming behind us, whether they're our natural relatives or people that God has put in our life and our sphere of influence, we owe a legacy to leave to them. That's, right. That's that baton Sister Carenza mentioned. Okay? But here, when you go through tests and trials, when you live right for God, you will suffer some things. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Some people don't want to suffer. That's it. Some people... By jealous and harmonious. Nuh-uh. They were like, I'm out of here. I'm gone, Paul. How about us today? We're suffering in this pandemic. But you know, for some other people, it's worse for them. Think about the persecuted Christians around the world. We can call on God. We can open our Bible. We can openly talk about the Bible. But the persecuted church all over the world in various countries. And they come on the broadcast trying to persecute us. But That's guess true. what? Victory That's in true. Jesus! Persecuted Christ, 
We know this is a fallen world. So we're not surprised when the world hates the light. It fell from the light. That's right. So that's kind of a synopsis of the book of 2 Timothy. We're going to go a little bit further talking about keeping the faith. And Sister Carenza said it is like a baton. Look at that. That doctrine being passed from Paul to Timothy. He held it himself. And he held it securely. Now I've seen relay races. I've seen where people will try and pass the baton. But they're not careful. But guess what? They were very sure holding this doctrine. So Periscope, I have a question for you. And this is the question. Actually, it's a task, okay? I want you to go online. You might have two devices, your tablet. You might be looking on, on your tablet. Get your cell phone, your laptop. And I want you to look up Strong's Concordance. Because in our memory verse, this reference right here, G5296, it means one of the words from the memory verse. So you all get started, start looking up Strong's Concordance Reference G5296. Why am I challenging you this? It's Sunday school. I'm trying to teach you no new skills so that as you stir up the gift, you are equipped to stir up the gift with the skills required to do that. Amen. So the memory verse, and I'm looking, I'm waiting for you all to respond. The memory verse says, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ. And that's found in 2 Timothy 1 and 3. No tricks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> or not this slide. All right. Yeah, let, me, yeah. let, me, let me say that more accurately. Oh, I see them coming in. Sister Tiara. Brother. Yes. Brother Naheem. All right. Let's see if they're right. Okay, Brother Fredell. All right. I see it coming in. Guess what? C is the correct answer. When you just do a Google search on this, we're doing it like a reverse lookup. When you look up this number, you find out that that references to this word, form. And we're gonna talk about this form. We're gonna talk about why this memory verse says form. Why is it important? What does it refer to? How does it make a difference, okay? So come with me on this journey. When you go and you look up these words to understand the meaning in the original language, you might see a reference like this. It's going to have uh, maybe a couple of reference sources. And as you get into it, you'll figure out which ones are, are credible and which ones aren't. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to show you uh, a count, how many times that particular word in the original language has been used in the scriptures. And for this word form, it's been used twice in the scriptures. And then down here, it tells you what those two what the nuances of that word is in that place. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? We have a word, R-E-A-D, right? Right. Yes, that's not a trick. We have a word in our language, R-E-A-D. But isn't that word used differently depending yeah. on the different circumstances? Absolutely. Doesn't it have a different nuance depending yeah. I read every day or I read every day. What does it do? It focuses you on a different period of time. Well, when you see these different nuances for that word, it's bringing out something very specific to that specific context. And so here, when you look up this word, you see it means pattern or form, right? Mm -hmm. When they looked it up, that's how they got it. And what are they saying? How is the Bible using it? As an outline, a sketch, a summary, an example, or a pattern. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got that in mind, we're going to kind of look at how that plays out in the scripture for the glory of God. So the one I'm focusing on is from this scripture, Hebrews, the 8th chapter, verse 5. Brother Arnold, if you could read that for me. Who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Yes. As Moses was admonished of God. Right. When he was about to make the tabernacle. Yes. For see, said he, mm -hmm. that thou make all things according to the pattern. Yes. Showed to thee in the mount. So remember we talked about the form and the scripture says hold the form of sound doctrine. That form means pattern. Right. 
we're very familiar with how he said, you got to build the house according to the pattern. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that try to build things. But if you don't build this relationship, your experience according to the pattern, the pattern that's set out in the sound doctrine, because there are, you won't get the proper result. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that try and take a little bit of the scripture here and a little bit of the scripture here and ignore the part that really cuts at, their, cuts at them. Mm -hmm. And they kind of think because they, this is a scripture and this is a scripture that they're saved and they're doing well. But the scripture tells us very clearly there is a form to godliness. Mm -hmm. There's a form to the doctrine that must be maintained. There's a pattern that we must build with. Amen. So we're going to see that a little bit more. Let's do 1 Peter 2.21, Brother Arnold. For even here unto were you called. You're called for this whole purpose. What? Because Christ also suffered for Oh, us. there goes that suffering, right? Leaving us an example. Oh, we've got an example. What that is an example? shall follow his steps. Amen. Example is a pattern. That's right. <laughs> It's a layout of how you should live, right? So why should they call us to follow Christ's example mm -hmm. and we not live in a holy life? Oh, he right. exampled a holy life. Right. His life gave a pattern of a life that was free from sin. Right. And we were called to follow his pattern. Yes. That is the doctrine. This is yep. God's word, not mine. It applies to me just like it applies to you. Yep. Amen. Yep. Titus 2 and 7, what does it say? In all things. Yeah, in all things. Showing thyself a pattern. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. You, that, you mm. got to be the pattern too. He gave us a pattern, told us to build according to the pattern. And then what is the product? Maybe you are a pattern of what? Showing thyself a pattern of good works. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that a pattern of we fall down? No, no, no. Oh, no, that's not the pattern right there. Oh, this pattern is of good works. Amen. What? Amen. In what doctrine. Oh, good works in the doctrine. Showing uncorruptness. Showing you are not corrupt. Your doctrine is not corrupt. Not when you take away or you add to the doctrine, you corrupt the doctrine. Amen. All right? Amen. You have to show this pattern of uncorruptness. Gravity. Gravity. Sincerity. Why do you have to do that? Because guess what? We're going to be called into account for what we do with this work. Yeah, that's right. Yes, we are. I, oh, yes. I exceedingly fear and quake. I want to build according to the pattern. Now, I went rich way back to growing up. And you know what? It, it reminded me of how we used to lay out patterns on clothes. Not everybody else is a remnant. We used to lay these patterns out. And I remember my mother teaching me how to sew. And we had to cut it out. And you know what? If we didn't follow the pattern, it didn't fit. <laughs> and guess what? God has a pattern. In Revelation, it talks about the fine white linen of the saints. That is according to the pattern. Our righteousness is according to God's pattern. Yeah. So let's go and look some more at the pattern. Because the pattern, the form of the sound doctrine, that's what we have to keep. Amen. So, the shadow of heavenly things. Now, I went too fast. The shadow of heavenly things. In the Old Testament, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God instructed them to build the tabernacle. We've had a lot of teaching and preaching on that. It's good foundation to understand the spiritual application yeah. because all of this points to God. Right. And quickly, this altar, the altar was on the outside. It was bronze, brazen, they called it. The altar represents the sacrifice of Christ. And then there was a laver, and both of these were brass, bronze, you know, they called it. It's the same thing, but they called it a little differently. But they were on the outside, right? They, you had to get through this before you can get in the house. What is that a pattern of? It's a pattern that you have to be cleansed by the sacrifice. The blood of Jesus has to propitiate for your sins, has to pay for your sin, and cleanse you from your unrighteousness. Amen. All of that is on the outside. Until that has happened, you're not on the inside yet, okay? You're still on the outside. That's in the outer court. There are a lot of people who are looking at this and looking at that, but it hasn't been applied.
apply to your life. You're not in the temple. You're not in the tabernacle. You're not in Christ. But then once they get into Christ, this is the pattern because the pattern in the, the type is a shadow of the heavenly. It's a reflection of what the spiritual life of the saint would be. And this is, all of these point to the experience of the saints. So now you get into the house. First thing you notice in the house, guess what? Everything is gone. Oh, Everything is gone. Man. Come on. Yeah. Here comes out that gold. Buy that gold, stirring it up, having that golden experience. And then the type, the pattern, fills it out. In the house is gold. What? Yeah. The gold lamp. Candlestick. You just walking in the light. This is your experience. And this is a type of the experience of those that keep the faith. Okay? You walking in the light. And then you feed off the bread. Christ is the living bread. You're feeding off the doctrine of God. Right? And then there's a table of, there's the altar of incense. That yeah. place of consecration. Yeah. That place where you allow God to consume you. Amen. Your ways and your flesh. So that you can have closer experience with God. And as you consecrate here, what? When God accepts your life, you're walking in the spirit, you're eating the bread, you're sacrifice, your consecration, guess what? He ushers you into a second chamber. Amen. You just don't stay Amen. here. There's a pattern here. There's a second place yeah. inside the tabernacle because that is the form of the sound doctrine that you and I are to hold to. We are to hold fast to it. Yeah. You can't just stay in this outer room. Right. That outer room represents something. I'm not going to tell you. And then there's an inner room because I got a slide, okay? Then there's an inner room and in that inner room there was the Ark of the Covenant Amen. which is a symbol for the very presence of God. Amen. The very presence Amen. of God. Yeah. And in that Ark of the Covenant it's so beautiful to me. They had the law, yeah. judgment yeah. from what was over judgment? Mercy. mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Judgment. Yeah. All of us are here today yeah. because of the mercy of God. Corona, no Corona. It's the mercies of God. Yeah. Sometimes God yeah. allows things to happen in the land for us to look up Look up, come on. We're looking up by the grace of God. Noah had one window in the ark, right? That window wasn't pointing at the water. It was looking up to God. We in salvation. We look up to God. God got this all under control. Praise God that got all of this under control. That's right. He had a tabernacle. And he had a temple. And that temple, when they got situated in that promised land, he had a temple. But guess what? The pattern did not change. That's right. The pattern did not change. Yeah. There were still two rooms, and you still had to go through the, the altar in order to get into the, the oh, whole yeah, temple yeah. itself. Okay? Yeah. And then you know what? He follows the pattern in the spiritual. Now, in the gospel day, guess what? This is the anti-type. This is the actual thing he was giving us a glimpse of in these natural things. And the scripture here in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter and 16, what does that say? Know ye not that ye are the oh, temple wait, of God. Oh, wait, 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 Before it was something outward. It was a temple made with hands. That was the pattern before. But now this temple is not made with hands. Talk about it, Brother Arnold. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Ye are the temple of God. Guess what? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Oh, wait a minute. The, the Spirit of God you. dwelling in me? Yeah. Okay. But guess what? This temple, this temple that is me, my experience, my life, it still follows the pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah. It still follows the pattern. Because I got to go through justification. The act of atonement and cleansing just to get in, to be a temple. And then as I'm working out my salvation with yeah. fear and trembling, guess what? I go into that secret place. Mm -hmm. And in that secret place, that close communion with God, yeah. guess what happens? The Spirit of God dwells in me. Amen. This is Amen. the pattern, the pattern, the pattern. That's the form of sound doctrine. And you have people who are trying to take nip and cut and take pieces away from the doctrine. And when you take the doctrine away, you got a different spirit. It's My not Lord. a spirit. My oh Lord. no. Yeah. There are many kinds of spirits in this world. Yeah. And none of them are without significance. Amen. All right. 
Periscope. I got another question for you because I'm following the pattern. I'm Amen. showing you a pattern here. And this question for you, you was on Periscope. Name the bodies of water that the children of Israel crossed. Name the bodies of water that the children of Israel crossed. If you got a really high resolution, you might be able to see them. But, you know, for the rest of us, we're just going to have to rely on our remembrance and what we've taken in. Oh, very good. I see Brother Naheem. Got it. Very good. Yes. I think that's Sister Nakia. Red Sea and Jordan. Now, when we look at it, let's look at the topography. Let's, let's look at how this was set up. First of all, the children of Israel were, were in Egypt. That's right. Yes. And didn't they grow there? Yes. That God prospered them there in spite of their persecution. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to throw it in. The stuff that comes from Africa is good stuff. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Amen. It was a good land. It was a good land. Amen. And he, he blessed and prospered his people. He just used Pharaoh as opposition to build the people. And he had them down there for a reason. You know, they were just a few people. All these other people could have eaten them up, chewed them up and spit them out, so to speak. So he had a place where they could grow and they could come stronger as a people. And when they were ready, he brought them out. I'm just giving a plug shamelessly for this country. All right? I love it. I love it. Okay? I'm not ashamed of who I am in the Lord. And then he called the people out of that land because he had a special land for them. And they began to travel. And then they came all the way down here and here at the place called Etham. That is when the enemy came, and the enemy rode up behind him and looked like all was lost, but God opened the door, Amen. and he crossed the Red Sea. Amen. In that temple, there was a cleansing. There was the labor, and that was like a time. It was a type of the cleansing, of crossing out of Egypt, because this was still Egypt. You see how this says that? Mm -hmm. Egypt. You know, there are a lot of people who God deals with them and they, they come to make progress to get to God, but you got to leave sin behind. Amen. You can't be hovering on this side, looking at us on this side, thinking that you all right. You have to leave sin behind, okay? Yeah. So they made that first crossing. And like Sister Corenza was saying about stirring up the gift, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't do that because they spent 40 years, wow. 40 years, wow. In a place that was a two-week walk. Oh, yeah. A two-week walk. Uh -huh. My God, they didn't stir up the gift. What would happen to us? What would happen to this body of believers right now if all of us were taking 40 years to get to where God wants us to get? Because we didn't stir up the gift of God within us. And then they came up here and they finally. Now, I must remind you, they didn't stir up the gift. Who was it that crossed over? Okay. Not the people that didn't stir up the That's gift. Right. <laughs> they died in the wilderness. The people that didn't stir up the gift, they died. They got graves out here. Right. They died. But then God always raised up somebody else. Amen. And you know what? They still went over full force. God raised up a whole nother generation. If you don't want to stir up the gift, guess what? God will raise somebody else up. But the church will stand. So here we see two crossings. Why? Because it's a pattern of two cleansings. Yes. Yes. It's a pattern of two cleansings. Yes. Two types of the water that you have to go through. I won't say it. I won't say it because I'm going to ask you in a minute, okay? <laughs> but now you know where we're going, right? Let's read this scripture in St. John, the 14th chapter, verse 17, Brother Arnold, please. Even the spirit of truth. Oh, who's the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit, all right? Whom so the even world, the spirit of truth, what? Whom the world cannot receive. Oh, you, you can't receive this if you're not saved. That's right. Go ahead. Because it seeth him not. You don't perceive what the spirit of truth is. Neither. You don't comprehend it. What else? Neither know it. Man. You don't know him. I don't care how you see the flow tie, bow tie fly on the Honda. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not holy living, you don't know him. All right? And what but else? ye know him. Oh, but who was he talking to? The saints, the disciples, right? He says, but ye know him. For he dwelleth 
with you. Wait, wait, wait. He was talking to the disciples right then, right? Yeah. right. And he said, he dwelleth with you. With you. He dwelleth with you. Right. And then he says, and shall and, be. And, and. What? They didn't get it at one time? No. Wait a minute. Is this a pattern? Is this a pattern? <laughs>
Here's your questions. I'll try not to say the answers because I want to keep you engaged. I want to keep your pure mind stirred up. Mm -hmm. Let's read these questions. Brother Arnold, how about that first one? Baptism rep represents the possession of the new birth experience that the Bible calls... What life. does that Bible call that new birth experience, Periscope? Come on. I'm keeping you all. Oh, I see. I'm not going to say Brother Nahid because he's sitting right here. He got it so fast. It seems like he's too old. Too old. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Sister Ariel. Praise God. Sister Ariel. Very good. <laughs> Sister Nakia, very good. You got it. And let's read the second. We're going to fill in the blank. Blank is the second work of grace, cleansing by right. the Holy Spirit. Oh, so what is that second one? Come on. Oh, I see Sister Carol got it. Let's see the answer. Yes. I didn't know if I had one click or two. Justification is the answer to the first one. And very good, saints of God. Sanctification is the second work. Didn't we see the pattern? Yeah. Didn't we see it in the temple, yes, in the did. tabernacle, in the cross things? Even Jesus experienced with the disciples. Oh, but there's still some that don't believe. We're going to hasten, hasten, and read what happened in Acts the 19th chapter. Can you start there, Brother Arnold? And it came to pass that while yes. Apollos was at Corinth, yes. Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, yes. came to Ephesus. Again, Ephesus. All right, that's where Timothy was. What else? And finding certain disciples. Oh, and they found certain disciples. He said unto them, Yes. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? What? Yeah. What? 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 what did yeah. they say? Have you seen what? Receive the Holy Ghost Have you received? since you believe. You are already a believer. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Come on now. And they said unto him, What? We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. And there's Lord. nothing wrong with coming to more life. Right. Look at the attitude they had when they yeah. began to teach them about more doctrine, more life, more understanding, more godliness. They weren't fighting. The light. They're like, we haven't heard of it. There's nothing wrong when you're dealing with people who haven't heard of it and they're willing and open. There's nothing wrong. The problem we have with people who have heard of it and they're fighting against the light. They're not holding fast to sound doctrine. They're not following the pattern. Verse 3, what else? And he said unto them, Yes. Unto what then were you baptized? All right. And they said, unto John's baptism. We knew we had to repent from sin. We knew we had to repent. So we did that. Okay. They're not fighting. Look at that. They're open. They're teachable. Verse yeah. 4. Then Paul said, Yes. John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Oh, with one, one baptism referring to water of repentance. What? Saying unto the people that you should believe on him which should come after me. That mm -hmm. is... On Christ Jesus. All right, go ahead, verse five. And when they heard this, yes. they were baptized Wait, in the minute. name. They were baptized of again. The Lord Why? Jesus. Because they got new life. They're like, we accept all this new life. We accept. They're honest people that may not understand it, but then there are other people who are trying to take it out of the doctrine, right. and that's perverting the gospel of Christ. Yes. When you see this example, we can work with that. We're not difficult, but we're holding fast. Mm -hmm. The Sound doctrine. Verse 6. And when that? Paul had laid his hands upon them. Oh, look at that. All you have to do is be willing. It don't take long to get sanctification, saints. You just don't tarry in the wilderness. Come on. Do what you got to do. The Holy Ghost came upon them. Yes. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And you know what? As soon as they got it, the gifts. Yeah. The gifts were manifested. How about us? How about you? How about I? Come on. Yeah. How about us? We're almost done. Friends, and I just wanted to touch on this, friends in the faith. Sometimes when you hold this doctrine like the Bible teaches it, sometimes you're going to have friends like Fidelis and Harmonious, and they're like, look at you. Uh, we, they forgot Paul. They were like, we're not trying to help you. You know what? It happened to Christ. It happened to Paul. If it happens to us, happy are you. Happy when you suffer for righteousness sake. God tells us to be happy. He had problems with them. He kept preaching. He kept teaching. He kept witnessing. He had demons. And this says here, Paul had an almost missionary compa uh, companion. His name was Demas. Paul wrote his entire history in nine words. He says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. I don't want that to be my, my testimony. I don't want that to be my legacy that I live. And then he had Hymenaeus and Alexander. He 
says, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Yep. When you see people going after the wrong doctrine and you try to reason with them, guess what? Leave them alone. Amen. Leave them alone. Let them be. Let them be. Not buffing their back for their own fault. But don't change. Hold fast for the glory of God. Amen. And then some of us will be like Onesiphorus. Mm. Isn't that something? Yes. Yes. Who ministered to Paul yes. in his affliction, in yes. his imprisonment. Praise he wasn't scared that they might like me, lock me up too. Right. He came anyway. If they lock you up, God got grace for the lock up. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yes, he does. Yes. Paul suffered. Yes. He had great, he was profitable in his text. Yes, Whatever is. happens to us for this gospel, we can be profitable yes. by Amen. the grace of God. Amen. And in the end, what is it? Oh, I love it. We got to fight the good fight of faith. We got to keep throwing jabs and hooks at the devil. Jabs and hooks at false doctrine and apostasy. Yes. Just because it's tight, guess what? It's only making us more like Christ for the glory Amen. of God. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're excited to see the saints who have signed up to come to the 11 o'clock service. We just encourage you to remember your mask. You have to have a mask. And those that have signed up or have visitors or you want to come and you don't have an appointment, you can come to the 1 o'clock service. And if there's room, it's based on first come, first serve basis. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, saints.